Hello everyone. Welcome back to today's topic of the day. Today, we'll be discussing about the key highlights of the Economic Survey 2022-23. Now, the Union Minister for Finance presented the Economic Survey 2022-23 in the Union Parliament. The highlights of the survey are firstly with respect to the state of the economy, the Indian economy is staging a broad-based recovery across sectors after recovering from pandemic-induced contraction, Russian-Ukraine conflict and inflation. India's GDP growth is expected to remain robust and in the range of 6 to 6.8% in the financial year 2023-24. If we talk about the fiscal developments, the gross tax revenue registered a year-on-year -year growth of 15.5% from April to November 2022, driven by robust growth in the direct taxes and goods and services tax, that is GST. Coming to the monetary management, the RBI initiated its monetary tightening cycle in April 2022 and has since raised the repo rate by 225 basis points, leading to moderation of surplus liquidity conditions. The gross non-performing assets ratio of scheduled commercial banks has fallen to a 7-year low of 5.0. The capital-to-risk weighted assets ratio remains healthy at 16. Next, if we talk about the inflation, the retail inflation is back within RBI's upper tolerance limit of 6% in November 2022. Steps taken by the government to control inflation included phase-wise reduction in export duty of petrol and diesel, import duty on major inputs were brought to zero, and prohibition on the export of wheat products under HS Code 1101 and imposition of export duty on rice. Moving on to the external sector, the mercantile exports were $332.8 billion from April to December 2022. India diversified its markets and increased its exports to Brazil, South Africa and Saudi Arabia. To increase its market size and ensure better penetration in 2022, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with UAE and Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement with Australia came into force. Also, India is the largest recipient of the remittances in the world receiving $100 billion in 2022. Remittances are the second largest major source of external financing after service export. Now, as of end November 2022, India is the sixth largest foreign exchange reserves holder in the world. Next, if we talk about the agriculture sector and food management, the private investment in agriculture has increased to 9.3% in 2020-21 and free food grains to about 81.4 crore beneficiaries is being provided under the National Food Security Act for one year from January 1, 2023. Next, if we talk about the industrial sector, the overall gross value added by the industrial sector for the first half of the financial year 22-23 rose to 3.7%, which is higher than the average growth of 2.8% achieved in the first half of the last decade. India also has become the second largest mobile phone manufacturer globally, with the production of handsets going up from 6 crore units in financial year 2015 to 29 crore units in the financial year 2021. The services sector is expected to grow at 9.1% in the financial year 2023 as against 8.4% year-on-year in the financial year 2022. India was among the top 10 services exporting countries in 2021, with its share in world commercial services exports increasing from 3% in 2015 to 4% in 2021. Next, physical infrastructure. The National Logistics Policy envisions to develop a integrated, cost-effective, resilient logistic ecosystem in the country for accelerated and inclusive growth. 
Inland Vessels Act 2021 replaced 100 year old act to ensure hassle free movement of vessels promoting inland water transport moving on to the digital infrastructure upi based transactions grew in value that is 121% and in volume that is 115% terms between 2019 to 2022 paving the way for its international adoption More than 98% of the total telephone subscribers are connected wirelessly and the overall tele density in India stood at 84.8% in March 2022. Next is social infrastructure and employment. According to the 2022 report of the UNDP on multidimensional poverty index, 41.5 crore people exit poverty in India between 2005 to 2006 and 2019 to 2020. And the labor markets have recovered beyond pre-covid levels in both urban and rural areas with unemployment rates falling from 5.8% in 2018 to 19 and 4.2% in 2020-21 now for the climate change and environment india declared the net zero pledge to achieve net zero emissions goal by 2070 India achieved its target of 40% installed electric capacity from non-fossil fuels ahead of 2030. A mass movement life that is lifestyle for environment was also launched. Sovereign green bond framework was issued in November 2022. and the national green hydrogen mission launched to enable india to be energy independent by 2047 now that was about the key highlights of the economic survey let's take a practice question consider the following statements statement 1 india declared the net zero pledge to achieve net zero emissions goal by 2050 Statement 2 India achieved its target of 40% installed electric capacity from non-fossil fuels ahead of 2030. Now which of the given statements is or are correct? You may take a moment and give your answer in the comment section below. Now the correct answer is B that is only statement 2 is correct. Statement 1 is incorrect as India declared the net zero pledge to achieve net zero emissions goal by 2070 and not 2050. I hope you liked the video and found the information useful. You may also check out our daily current affairs section on our website and for more such videos stay tuned to the next IS YouTube channel.